Hey, what's up everyone? Just got to Las Vegas. I'm at the Artisan Hotel, aka Hotel Paranormal for Shockfest 2019. It's a combination of Paranormal Investigator Convention and Horror Film Festival. John Zaffis, the Haunted Collector himself, is going to be here. Let's go check it out inside. See you there. How do you screen what demonology is, and how do you give, give out credentials to a true demonologist? Okay, how do you give out credentials to a, a true demonologist? There's nothing in existence. Nothing. Just like paranormal investigator. That's why I just bust out laughing when I see a lot of times, oh, I'm certified paranormal investigator. <laughs> 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 I'm, a, I'm a certified demonologist. In, in what? Demonology. <laughs> Demonology is a very broad term. What does demonology mean? It means the study of a lot of different things, cultures, belief systems, practices. All kinds of things fall under that umbrella for demonology. There's people that practice demonology on the dark side. There's people that practice demonology on the light side. And, well, in the gray too. But anyway, <laughs> it, it's a very broad term, and it's something that people have to be careful. Because as soon as somebody says that to me, I go, well, I'm a demonologist, and I go, okay, and what? What are, you, what are you telling me you do or what you practice? I said, then I'll look at it from that perspective, just like a paranormal investigator. It's the same thing. You know, I look a little bit differently, and when I deal with spiritual people that are trained in demonology because their perspective is totally different from us. That, you know, it goes from a Catholicism perspective or a Judaism perspective, but that is different. Their training is from their belief system and to do what they need to do. So that's a little bit different. So I'll look at that a little bit differently than I will a lay person basically saying that they're a demonologist. So that's, it gets complicated. Would you share a little bit about the output of bringing a demonologist to a haunting? What what does a demonologist do when they enter a, a, an investigation? Depends on how you're going to look at that. I don't really feel that a demonologist should get involved with the case unless you're really dealing with something that's really getting hardcore. And what I mean by that, okay, uh, the only way I look at that a little bit differently, and I still do to this day, if there's kids involved, then, they, they, you know, everything's off the table. Okay, you know, my crew's out investigating, everybody's doing stuff, oh my God, I think there's a de devil demon here, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I'd be like, okay, well, why are you saying that? And what's giving you the perspectives of that? Anyhow, I'll look at that probably a little bit differently. I think it's important when a demonologist is getting involved, we have to take a look at, okay, what is the reasoning? Are you going from a spiritual perspective? Are you going in just for the sake of getting something documented? Are you going in to help, you know, uh, be able to bring spiritual people in to be able to help that person? There's a wide variety that I would look at when dealing with that. Right. So, um, can you give me some specific examples of um, how a demonologist should be trained? <clears throat> I think a, a key factor with demonology is an important element to deal with us old people. <laughs> because it's such a true thing, and even to this day, I'm still very fascinated and drawn to 
elder people that have been involved with the paranormal field because their knowledge base goes beyond anything you'll ever read. Now, the second part to that is that it's an unwritten rule or an unwritten thing that a lot when we deal with the spiritual realm, especially in the demonology field, too much information out there deters from what we're going to be able to do. So therefore, a lot of things are very guarded. And it's a very guarded realm when you get involved with the demonology field or the practice of a lot of things. Not just that, you know, again, you study old, uh, or you know people that have been involved. All right, shaman, perfect example. You deal with the shaman, he's not going to lay all this stuff on the table. He's not going to do it. So it's the same thing with demonology. It's just not one of those uh, areas that you do. I can't tell you how many very good friends I have. <coughs> you know, I'll be talking to them, trying to help them on cases in the room. You know, oh man, you just won't get off the information. And I go, it's not the fact that I won't get off the information. I don't know what you're doing and what you're dealing with. That's a key element with a lot of this understanding. So with training, I, the, the other thing I can always recommend, if they're spiritual people and you can befriend them and they're willing to let you into their world, it's where you can gain the best knowledge in deep knowledge. Whether that be Native American, pagan, a Buddhist, or rabbis, I tell you, rabbis are the coolest people to work with. <laughs> I mean, they are the toughest freaking characters. They go in, kick ass, and walk out. It, 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 it's amazing. Buddhists, the same thing. I've worked with Buddhists, they go in, and they're just like, the rituals just, you know, they, they shake you right to your core. So it's, it's interesting to watch a lot of that stuff. And I've watched them, you know, be very successful with that. So hopefully that helped answer that. It, absolutely, and just just for uh, transparency's sake, could you explain exactly what does a demonologist do? Does it remove the spirit? Does it um, attract it to something else? What does it? Do? What is the job of a demonologist? He um, okay. Wow, it's a lot to go Depending on what that demonology demonologist is involved with, okay, I'm a demonologist. My job is to go in to try to figure out exactly what we could possibly be dealing with. It's my job to find out are we dealing with people that have any spiritual foundation or do I have to look at this from another perspective? What's my next, next course of action to be able to try to bring some type of closure to that situation we're dealing with. Now, here again, too, you have to take that step back and realize organized religions are deteriorating like you can't believe. It doesn't matter what it is. Judaism, Christianity, they're deteriorating at a rapid rate today. So therefore, you know, you have to take that into consideration and try to figure out sometimes what you're going to do or how you're going to do it. So there's a lot of elements for me that tie in, you know, uh, when it comes into the demonology and um, what my next move is going to be and what I'm going to be able to do. Right. It's cryptic, but that's the best I can do. <clears throat> I think the most terrifying things to answer you is when I've been in those situations where we're really dealing with the serious negative cases. And when something appears to you that just alters that perception because you know 30 years ago when seeing something coming down the staircase fully formed and stunk it was ugly looking it scared the hell out of me and the only thing i could think of was to get out of the house and i didn't want to work on cases ever again i wanted nothing to do with this stuff again and that solidified to me you always heard the stories you always heard about these things it was no longer a story it's now part of my reality so therefore you have to readjust once, you always hear stories or something, but once you witness something, it's no longer a story, now it's part of your reality. So that alters, I won't explain that anything to him. And he said, so basically, he goes, you're going to let it win. And I go, what do you mean I'm going to let it win? He says, if you don't go back, it's intent purpose was to scare you enough so you won't do the work anymore. So I said, basically, you had told, you know, I said, 
putting it that way, I said, you had a good point. I said, that's basically putting a challenge to me to stand up against it. So I went back in the house. Was I scared? Yeah, I was scared of that. I haven't been back in the house ever since the exorcism was performed. Those types of things that went to me. It changed me. Eric Garcia. Uh, good morning, Mr. Zaffis. <laughs> so, uh, in your book, Shadows of the Dark, which actually by page eight terrified me, by the way, but I kept on reading it. In your book, you go into more depth about the entity you saw coming down the stairs, and you go into detail about how you left the field completely, and then later on, you, obviously, you return to it. So, my question is, after all these years, everything you've seen and experienced, what keeps you in this field? What keeps you in the work, as you call it? And since that happened, do you take, do you make it a point to take regular breaks from it where like you don't consult, you don't do anything? One thing I see today, I'll answer the second part first, is I think it's extremely unhealthy 24-7 paranormal. Yes. I'm watching this, people are breathing and eating. Everything is paranormal about their lives. Do I take breaks? Absolutely. I could be working on three or four different cases. It gets real hardcore. We got a lot going on. I shut right down. I'll shut right down. Most of the time you can tell because I disappear off Facebook and everything else. I just shut right down from everything. Um, that's an important element. And I, I've seen too many people walking away. I mean, you have a life. People have life. People have kids. They have relationships. They have jobs. And they're letting this consume them. It's the worst thing in the world. It's the worst thing in the world to do that. Because you just, you, you're altering your whole life. <clears throat> and that takes away as far as what it's about. And in the best analogy I ever came up with, and this came from a doctor friend of mine. He said to me, so I said to him, I said, how do you deal with all the war and, you know, seeing all this and everything like that? He goes, you have to learn to have an off switch. And I went, you know, and I thought about that and thought about that. And then I went on this crusade with doctors and nurses and people that work in uh, institutions and cops and firemen. And they all told me the same thing. They said, if you don't have that off switch, it will destroy you. The paranormal can do the same thing. So, I'm just telling people, we've already to be careful with that. Uh, we have a little bit more time. I want to add, ask you. questions to the three final parts. Uh, Eric, I'll let you be the last question, and then we got to start moving on with uh, related to the topic of binding, now one of the things that I liked about the TV show is they would show um, excerpts of like folklore and what was believed hundreds of years ago. One that stood out to me was uh, they used to take thieves and they would bury a thief at a crossroads so as to confuse his spirit in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend something like that if you had an item with, that you knew, an object that had some serious negative energy? after you get all the binding and salt and silk wrapping and all that to maybe bury it at a crossroads? Never had anybody ever ask me that? Absolutely. Crossroads are a very spiritual area. Most, most of our crossroads come back from Native American uh, certain types of perspective. And it is a very firm belief that if you do bury something at a Actually, we did an episode where we had to remove one of the items from a crossroad. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't the, the focus item. And I made Brian and Chris go out and dig it. They were swearing at me. <laughs> um, to this day, there are still several very spiritual crossroad places where I have interred items that were too negative to actually do anything with. Good question, Mike. Right thank you, sir. All right, we have to start wrapping this up. Uh, John, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with us. Guys, I want to thank all of you.